Today I'm going to take a look at this Verizon G1100 router. Now this thing is very big. Um, I went from having a PFSense box, which appeared in a video at one point, to uh, switching to Verizon. And you know, this router is actually pretty good. It does the stuff I want, so I'm probably just going to keep this. And besides, uh, due to this, the weird design of their network, uh, I kind of have to use their modem, or sorry, their router, because it has a coax connector on it, which is a little weird <laughs> on a router. So, um, yeah, this is, to give it scale, this is my Doxus 3 modem that I was using for my uh, Time Warner service, which was uh, 50 megabit down and 5 up. And with this, it yeah. is 900 up, 900 down give or take. I've seen it as high as 950 both ways. So it's a pretty impressive system. Uh, the guy actually had to come in and run a fiber cable from the street, like uh, the the, uh, the alley behind my apartment, and ran a fiber cable all the way to the house and ran it through the wall. And uh, luckily there was an old uh, coaxial cable coming through the wall, so he just ripped that out. and. Uh, he runs it to a box called an ONT, an optical network terminal. What they do is they basically convert the fiber into coax and ethernet. So you can kind of think of it as looking like this on the other end. But the weird thing is, uh, this actually has to hook into it too. So what they do is they, it runs out of the optical network terminal, splits, one goes to your TV, your, like your, your um, DVR, and the other goes to your router. So it's like merging the two signals. And um, from what he said, the reason why they have to do that is that the coax doesn't have enough bandwidth or something. But I think the real reason is that this allows them to run one cable to your DVR. The DVR that they ship has an Ethernet port and it also has an, a coaxial port. So what this router is essentially doing, it's, it's providing Ethernet v via coax. And it, it makes it so they don't have to run an Ethernet cable around your apartment. So, uh, I mean, I had Ethernet right there, so they could have just used that. But um, they don't need that separate cable. I believe just... If you, if you provided ethernet and a coax connection from the box, I believe that's all it would need. This, this just means it, it just feeds both into one line, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't actually tested it out. Uh, that's just my theory on how uh, their weird network works, but I don't care, it's fast. So uh, this thing came with, if I can find it, a power supply, which is a three amp, 12 volt one. And I don't think this is for it because it actually came with a little adapter to make it fit. So I don't know, this one is used. I bought this used off eBay, by the way. The one that my service came with is identical. It just has a different power supply. Uh, this one uh, was 75 bucks, give or take, whereas they want $10 a month for the, <laughs> the one they provide and they're identical. So you can just buy your own. And now they actually do offer a brand new one for 150 bucks when you sign up. But, you know, who cares? They're never gonna die, get a used one. And uh, there you go. <laughs> so um, when I got this thing, it was making this rattling sound and I had no idea what was going on inside it. So I opened it up. I mean, I would open it up anyway, cause I'm curious, but the, uh, the, the rattling turned out to be caused by a piece of plastic and a brass, um, a brass fitting that was uh, holding a screw here. And I think that's the one screw that basically holds this thing together that everything else is just snap fit. On the back of the unit, there's two USB ports. I assume they're USB 3 because they have blue around them, although it's not actually explicitly stated what they are and what they're for because the manual just says it's disabled. There's a reset button for gigabit ethernet ports, gigabit WAN port, a uh, couple uh, LEDs, the coax port, and the three, three amp 12 volt power supply. There's also an HAN panel here. 
where if you pry it off, um, I don't know if we'll be able to see it. Let me grab my flashlight. There's actually a pin header in there. And from what I've read, this is actually for a home automation system. It's a, it'll be for a little Zigbee radio. So you can control your light switches and stuff like that. Uh, they have not implemented that yet. I believe Time Warner has, or sorry, Spectrum. I believe Spectrum has, so you can sign up and get it so you can turn your lights off from your app. Yay. Uh, anyway, the only other thing on this is um, a WPS button for the kind of automated Wi-Fi setup, and it's got a couple LEDs on the front. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward, if not large, router. The technology they use for sending the network over the coax is actually uh, called MOCA, M-O-C-A, the Multimedia Over Coax Alliance standard, which provides a set of rules for making devices that um, allow you to basically send network information over a coax cable. Uh, they range in speeds from 100 megabits all the way up to 2.5 gigabits. Now, I don't think the 2.5 gigabit one is really available yet, but um, basically it's you can think of it as Ethernet over coax, although I don't believe it uses anything that remotely resembles the Ethernet standard. Another interesting thing is that you can actually go out to Amazon and buy little adapters that basically on one end turn... Um, twisted pair into coax and then back to ethernet, which is great because if you have an old house that has coax running through it all and you want to run ethernet upstairs, but you don't really use the coax cable. I don't know if it can coexist with, um, with regular TV stuff, but if you have like dead coax that's just sitting in the walls, you can actually just use it as an ethernet cable and run it all the way up there. So we can see it's broken up into sections. There's a whole section here for the Ethernet switch, and that's going to be a, an Ethernet switch controller from Broadcom. There's a whole shielded coax section. There's a shielded section here, uh, presumably for the wireless. This has both uh, 5 gigahertz and 2.4 uh, gigahertz, along with, um, the well, it supports all the standards up to uh, 802.11ac. So there's quite a few antennas. There's one here, here. Uh, there's a little PCB mount one here, over here. Like there's just, they're all over the place, which means I'm probably not gonna be able to take this board out just because these are all heat staked in and I don't wanna go disconnecting all of this stuff. And these ones are actually soldered in. So it'll be a pain in the ass. Although I might have to if I take this heat sink off. I don't know if there's like nuts under here that are gonna come loose, but we'll see. Anyway, um, this looks, also like it's a wireless radio section and then you have this controller here which is probably um, some kind of custom chip for uh, perhaps the coax and then you have a flash and then there's a main cpu under uh, kind of a basic slab heat sink and you can see a little bit of thermal paste under there okay so i've taken the screws off let's see if this pops off i believe this is just going to be a quad core arm chip Although it looks like this might actually be something radio related. Looks like there's another shielding can under here. That is bizarre. I have never seen a shielding can under a heat sink like that before. Okay, so give me a second. Let me try and carefully pop that shield off. That has to be one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. Why did this have a heat sink on it? It looks like it's just the RAM. That's really bizarre. Why does it have a shielding can and a big metal heat sink that isn't even thermally connected to the, what is, I presume, the main CPU? Bizarre. I don't, I don't know. Unless there's a CPU under there, uh, underneath it, that I can't see. And like I said, I'm not going to pull this thing apart. That, that is just really weird. I've, I have no idea why they're doing that. This chip, manufactured by Cortina, the WPCS7542 is the main CPU. It's a dual core 750 megahertz ARM Cortex A9, and it's got 3XP CIE, SATA, 
USB 2, so it looks like those ports are USB 2, not 3, unless they have an external controller. Uh, all sorts of stuff like UARTs and um, LCD interfaces, SD interfaces, and it's used for various home routers, and it's even used for some NASes. Moving around the board, this is the flash. It'll store the main operating system and whatnot. Uh, it looks like they left some protection off the USB ports. A whole bunch of open areas there. The uh, magnetics for the Ethernet ports are over there. This is a Broadcom uh, BCM53125, which will they'll just be a gigabit Ethernet uh, hub or switch, I should say. So I had to look this one up. I wasn't really sure why there's two of these exact uh, Broadcom BCM6803 chips. I wasn't really, I figured it was an Ethernet controller, but it looks like they're um, these, these multimedia over coax controllers, and there's two of them. So it looks like they're either using two separate channels or uh, bonding the connection for more throughput. I can't find too much information on them. I, barely even figured out what they were thanks to Google, which is rare, but it happens. And uh, yeah, they each have provision for a shielded can around the oscillator. And up here, these are gonna be drivers and stuff for the coax, because the coax connection's right through that can, which I don't think comes off yet. Yeah, it looks like that's pretty firmly attached. And moving along, we can see some of these antennas big solder blobs connecting to the antenna support. These are the soldered on antenna cables. That'll be for the Wi-Fi. And another shielded section is probably all relating to the ethernet radio, or sorry, the Wi-Fi radios, and that'll be a Wi-Fi controller of some type. Looks like it's another Broadcom. Power supply stuff for it. Off in the corner of the board, this SD3502A is actually a Z-Wave controller. Z-Wave is uh, similar to Zigbee, except it's really geared towards home automation. It's a, it's a wireless communication protocol that I had never even heard of. Apparently it was introduced in 2001, and it's designed for, well, home automation, turning off uh, lights, opening up door locks, that sort of thing. And I'm not sure if it's like missing an antenna and that's what the connector is for or if it's just a programming header of some type because from what I read this is actually a pretty integrated uh, controller solution for it so um, yeah I, I guess it's there and um, from what I was reading they want to implement Zigbee because it's a newer protocol but I'm not positive that's really up to Verizon oh there they are now in the last shielded section, the Broadcom BCM4360 is the 5 gigahertz 802.11ac gigabit transceiver. So this is what's providing the 802.11ac wireless networking. There's another small chip in there. I don't know what that's doing. Oh, it's probably a, an amplifier because it's it's on the path to the antennas. And they've got this onboard antenna here with a little connector for an external one. They don't have fitted, but this side uh, they are using uh, external antennas. And that's pretty much it on this thing. It's a pretty densely packed board. It's also uh, marked as green wave system, so I don't know if they're the OEM for the these uh, routers. Yeah, it seems to work well. I gotta swap it out now and I want to make a video before I do the swap and don't really unplug it ever again. <laughs>